So you might have picked up on this from reading the title of this video, but over the past few days, I have had the opportunity to play the next-gen version of Witcher 3. I've had a good amount of hands-on time with the update, from White Orchard to Velen to the brand new quest, and I've been soaking it all in as someone whose favorite game by far is the one on your screen right now. This is going to be a first impressions type of video, although impressions might be underselling it a little bit, as I've put about 10 hours into the next-gen version on PS5 as of recording this. I've done all of White Orchard, I originally intended to just do the main quest, but then I couldn't resist and ended up completing everything. I've also started in on the Bloody Baron questline, and of course beeline to the new quest the moment I could. There's a lot to say about this update, but before I do, I of course want to thank CDPR for including my channel and letting me check the next-gen version out ahead of time. Not only is that extremely helpful, but more importantly, it was very meaningful to me. Also, I checked and double-checked to make sure I didn't blow the whole operation, but just so you know, I can talk about anything I experienced in my hands-on time with the update, but for the gameplay on screen, I can't show my own just yet, but I can use a bunch of great new stuff CDPR provided me. So, right out of the gate, I just want to say that visually, this update knocks it out of the park. It's still The Witcher 3, which has always looked very good, but the improvements made become more and more obvious the further you get into a new playthrough. During the little dream sequence prologue at Kaer Morhen, there's not much new that's immediately going to stand out, but once I was cut loose in White Orchard and from that point forward, I regularly was finding myself stopping and just taking in how great my surroundings looked. They've also added in some new weather effects that are so well implemented and atmospheric, and again they just made me stop in my tracks from time to time. Like I said, I was on PS5, which was new for me, I had only ever played Witcher 3 on PC before this. Because I was on console, I should comment on the two options you have in terms of graphics. There's ray tracing mode, which prioritizes reflections and lighting at a target of 30 FPS, and there's performance mode, which very consistently gets you to 60 without those benefits. For my preferences, performance mode was the clear winner, but to be fair, I am so used to 60 FPS on PC that 30 just looks really off to me at this point. If you're willing to sacrifice the higher frame rate for those other improvements, then ray tracing mode is a strong option as well, it just wasn't for me with the 30 FPS. Once I get this update on PC, I can't wait to experience 60 with everything else because I'm sure that will look amazing. This next-gen version also supports haptic feedback with the PS5 controller, and I have to say, I'm really going to miss that feature when I switch back to PC. It was confirmed that a PS5 controller connected to a PC won't support that feature unfortunately, so if you want haptic feedback, your only option is PS5. In my time with the update, the only performance issue I had, and it's possible this gets fixed in the final build, is that several times when a quest objective would update, the game would stutter for a moment. This happened to me at least a dozen or so times just momentarily, but again, that's literally the only issue or bug of any sort I ran into in my 10-ish hours of playing. Okay, to move on, let's talk about the gameplay and exploration changes. The new camera mode, which is much closer to Geralt, is on by default, or at least it was in the build I had. You can toggle it on or off for different elements of gameplay, so for example, you can have it on for horse riding in combat, but off for exploration. My early conclusion is that this new camera is amazing for two of the three settings. In exploration and on Roach, the new camera makes everything feel much more cinematic, in a way that I found really engaging. The new combat camera also benefits in the same way most of the time, and the CDPR provided gameplay definitely highlights that side of it, but the tighter angle on Geralt does result in you fighting the camera more often than before. This is especially true in those situations where you're fighting a ton of enemies at once, and in those moments the old normal camera just gives you a wider view of your surroundings. With the new tighter angle, you end up having to swing the camera wildly at times to keep an eye on enemies that may not be in your direct line of sight. I haven't found that to be a consistent issue or anything, but it has cropped up a few times, and I may eventually experiment by going back to the original camera for combat, while keeping the new one everywhere else. We'll see though, again, I'm still getting used to the changes. On the topic of combat, the new quick cast system for signs also changes things up, and in my opinion, in a completely positive way. The system works by you holding down the right trigger, and then your buttons become dedicated signs. Once you memorize which button is assigned to each, this new system feels far better than the original, and more impressively doesn't at all feel like a 7 year later workaround. It feels completely natural, like it could have been part of the combat from day 1. I did have to toggle it on in the menus to use it, so bear that in mind if you want to check out the new system. Other gameplay changes I noticed so far include how you loot herbs and flowers. You no longer have to bring up a little menu, instead you just loot them more passively by pressing a button with no on-screen confirmation. 
It also doesn't stop you in your tracks like before, you can just be in a full on sprint looting every herb in sight. Geralt even has a little grab animation he does now, which I'm pretty sure was never there before. I've also noticed new animations for Roach, and I swear there was another one for Geralt I'd never seen before, although I could be wrong. You can also back up with Roach now, which you never could before, you always kind of had to awkwardly turn around, whereas now, you can just back up. To switch over to the new content, if you're wondering about the two non-Netflix armor sets and swords that were seen in the reveal stream, I'm not going to spoil how you come about them in-game, but I'll just say it's done in a simple yet really interesting way with story tie-ins that I'll definitely be talking about in a later video. In my playthrough, I already have both in my inventory, but I'm not a high enough level to use either yet, which I'm working on. One is a higher level than the other, but both are early to mid-game sets. Also, I did enable the Nilfgaardian Netflix armor while playing because I had to see it for myself, and it's about as ridiculous as you'd think. It's impossible to take the Nilfgaardian seriously while they're in it, and I hadn't really thought about certain more prominent characters that would have to wear the new set. Every single time, it took me by surprise when I'd enter a cutscene, and instead of what I was thinking they'd be wearing, they were wearing... that. Again, I can't show my gameplay from the next-gen version right now, but you get the idea. There was also a sort of laugh-out-loud moment for me when I had left White Orchard and went to visit Amir, because after you exit his chambers, there's always been this long hallway of displayed Nilfgaardian armor, and while I hadn't ever given that hallway a second thought in the past, I can say that I simply was not prepared for an entire wall of the Netflix look on proud display. Okay, so before I wrap this video up, I do want to talk about the new quest. Not gonna spoil it or even hint at what it's really about, but I do want to talk about the quality. It's amazing, it's wonderful, it's such a great, well-done quest in this universe, and man, as a little slice of what CDPR can still do with The Witcher, it just makes me excited for what's to come. Bravo to everyone who worked on it, you did a great job, and it fits right in with this game we've all loved for so long. The Geralt Netflix cosmetics do have a connection to the quest line. it leads you down the path of getting your hands on them, but they're really not at all what the quest itself is about. For me, the entire thing took about an hour and 15 minutes, although it's worth pointing out that I was severely underleveled. I went straight for the new quest after getting to Velen, so I was level 4, and the new quest is in the teens. Because of that, all the combat involved took significantly longer, because everything takes forever to kill when there's that big of a gap, and you'll have to do a fair amount of fighting. Plus, I was on Blood and Broken Bones difficulty, which makes things even more difficult, because I had to be super cautious, and like I said, the combat just took forever. I also was really savoring and taking my time with everything, so it's not going to last an hour plus for everyone. I'd say if you're at a proper level and are just going through it like any other content, it would still last at least a solid 40 minutes. Everything about it is so well done, hearing my man Doug back as Geralt warmed the cockles of my heart, and I just had a great time with the quest in general. It kind of took me back to some of the Blood and Wine side content, mostly in the way that I just had to stop myself and appreciate that even with all of the hours I have in The Witcher 3, the game was still managing to surprise me. I consistently felt that way during my first Blood and Wine playthrough, and this new quest was giving me that same feeling. That said, there is plenty more to talk about, but this video was just for my first impressions. Tomorrow, I'm going to dive back in, and I'll have more content for you in the coming days. Thank you for watching, and again, thank you to CDPR for giving me this opportunity. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like as it helps to get these videos out there, and if you're interested in more Witcher content in your sub box, well, you know what to do. Also, if you don't already own The Witcher 3, I do have an affiliate link down below to GOG, and using that would definitely help out the channel. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.